and it's not quite as fast, especially if you're surprised just to go. All right. Now, again, I'm not going to say that using your front sight only is more accurate than using both sights. If I had my choice, I would always walk around with the gun, again, finger pointed, in this position, gun up, line of sight. Boom. There it is. Okay? I would always prefer to do that. But in the real world, that's not going to happen. Okay? We know that you don't know when the bad thing is going to happen. You don't know what is around the next corner. So by walking here, keeping the gun, keeping your head erect, uh-oh, boom. Now, I've effectively, guns unloaded, I've effectively brought the sight into my line of sight. Boom. And that's what point shooting is all about with this gun. And that's why this gun is uniquely qualified to point shoot because this front sight is two and three quarter inches above the barrel. It gives you the ability to point the front sight right at the target. And understanding that all you've got to do is keep this section of the sight lined up on your target and you're going to have a fairly accurate combat shot. Let's move on to the next segment. Okay, let's talk about shooting positions for CQC. Understand that a prone position, a seated position, a kneeling position, probably not going to be, well, not necessarily effective, but not possible based upon the true de definition of CQC. CQC, close quarter combat. At this distance, I don't want to go prone. I don't want to go, I don't want to kneel. I, I have no choice. I have no time to do those things. All right, so most of our shooting is going to be from a standing or crouched position. Crouched. Okay, and you'll see, or hope you'll, you'll never see, but it's proven that when bullets start to fly, people crouch down instinctively. Okay? Bang, bang, oop. What happened? Let me make myself smaller. Okay? As small as I can be because I don't want to get hit. One of the old sayings in uh, military circles is all my tall friends are dead. Okay, guys who've been to combat, big tall guys are a bigger target. Okay? Sad but true. So, what I'd like to do in this segment is talk about the position that you may find yourself in, and that is a, a crouching or semi kneeling. Not really knee on the ground, I mean, you can maybe go down, knee on the ground, but you don't really want to anchor yourself too hard because you want to be able to get up and move again. By its very nature, CQC, we don't know where anybody is, okay? People are coming fast. At 10, 15 yards, they could be on top of you in seconds, two seconds. You don't want to sit down because it takes too long to get back up. All right, we want to be able to assume some sh shooting positions in a low angle. All right, got the CAR here, okay? I'm walking around, all of a sudden, uh oh, there's the bad guy, oh. Okay, again, point shooting at him, putting the front sight, centered up on the target, on the body that I'm trying to hit, but what I'm trying to do is get low, okay, because I know that's going to happen anyways. Bam, thing, go. Okay, there's how you're going to find yourself in a real scenario, so you might as well take the time now to practice it, because you know as soon as something bad happens, bad guy shoots, you're going to get low, and you're going to start pointing instinctively and shooting. Now, okay, again, all my shooting friends out there are going to say, well, you know, it's much more accurate to use the front sight and rear sight, and gosh darn it, it is, okay? But I don't feel that if someone's shooting at me, I'm going to have the time with this rifle to bring the sight up, okay? 
If I may, just doing the sweet spot theory, keeping in mind that my line of sight, I want to line up. Okay, but then again, I also feel that I want to have at least a good chance to point. Okay, and you can do that at these close distances. Now I'm talking less than 25 yards. All right. I wouldn't suggest you try to do this at 50 yards. You're not going to be accurate. And at 50 yards, all of a sudden you have a little bit more time to see that sight. Okay, we're talking about CQC in close. So, you can see I've taken a bunch of shots. These are the misses right here. Everything else is very accurate and very deadly. The idea with this whole drill, this movement and now position drill, is that you've got to start to practice what will actually occur in the field. I am a firm believer in getting up on that site, seeing a site. All right? Come out here to my next target out there, 50 yards. I want to see that sight, and I want to shoot the shot. And I'm a firm believer that when they're that far out, you need to see both sights. Just that, that's you know, no ifs, ands, or buts. But when you're in this close, and that guy's got a gun, and he's pointed at you, you've got to shave fractions off the second it takes to access the weapon accurately. And if you take the time to practice and put that front sight on top of the target, you're going to be effective and you're going to be faster. And that's where we're going with this whole thing because fractions of a second, tenths of an inch are what we're talking about here for survival. Fractions of a second, tenths of an inch. And if you can shave a fraction of a second off, your chance for survival is much greater. I want to take this time now to demonstrate to you uh, this uh, chalker sling. Uh, this is basically the setup that I would do for true CQC. Now, understand if you know there's a riot or earthquake or something like that, I'm I'm dressing like this. Okay, uh, I've got the uh, Glock in the thigh holster. I'll probably put another Glock here, the backup right here, and I've also got the uh, AR-15. But I've also got my hands free. All right, that's very important. Uh, for long-term comfort and uh, your ability to uh, function. Now, what I've got is this sling, which I think is just really absolutely fantastic, and I'm going to demonstrate it to you. Of course, I've got the uh, vest on as well. Got it loaded down with magazines and everything else I would need. Uh, the sling itself is a standalone item. I'm going to go ahead and turn around and let you see the back, the harness type situation there. Okay. And then here on the front, you can see that... Uh, it's got a middle or center line, again, very important to me, center line uh, hold, okay? The gun will dangle a little bit here, but I've also got it coupled with Blackhawk's cuff, they call it, uh, gun cuff. And so basically now, this takes a little bit of the weight of the gun off of the harness, although it really distributes the weight, the weight nicely. And it also secures the gun, so if I wanted to run, it's not going to flop around quite as bad. It will flop around a little bit, but it's going to stay in there. I may want to even hold it. The other thing, too, is it's readily available. Out, boom, doom. And here you can go ahead and shoot like so. Now, one of the other things about this, okay, is I've got a little push-pull thing working here. I can shoot in this position, okay? And one thing that's really exciting is I can actually pull on the red tab, and out it comes. All right, so let's go ahead and do that all over again. And you'll see what I'm talking about, and then we'll shoot some live fire. And it's got a marine style, made out of brass, hook. You can see how comfortable it is, like that. The weight's distributed evenly. I can hold the gun like so. Whoops. And I can also put in its cuff, like so. There it is, again. Gives the ability to walk around. Gun's not going anywhere. Okay. Perfect. Need the gun. There it is. Okay. Now, 